Hey, what's up guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and I bet you didn't know I'm actually a pretty big fan of Star Wars. So when I first heard about Battlefront coming out, I absolutely could not wait to get my hands on this game. And I figured I would go ahead and do the trendy thing that everyone else is doing, is talk about Star Wars Battlefront and basically show you some pretty awesome gameplay here. I've kind of gotten the hang uh, of Battlefront, and we're having a lot of fun with it. So I figured we'd do some gameplay here and just kind of give you my thoughts about the game as well as show you some of my pro MLG skills. Don't hate, bro. The Master Case 5 and Master Case 5 Pro from Cooler Master combines modularity with creativity, giving you the freedom to build it your way. Make it yours by clicking the link down in the description. Okay, so this gameplay is going to be taking place in Drop Zone. We'll do a separate video for Walker Assault. They're two completely different types of gameplay. Um, Walker Assault is actually quite unbalanced right now, and I'm not happy with it because the Rebels are always getting screwed, in my opinion. And it's not just one or two games that I force that opinion on, or form that opinion on, force the opinion. I might have forced it too, but... Uh, it, you know, if you look at the forums and you look at tweets and you just play the game enough, you will realize that the Rebels have a very slim chance of ever winning. Uh, it's kind of like Arena in Warcraft, where you know, or Battlegrounds in Warcraft, where it's just like, oh my god, they, the Alliance always win at Trek Valley sort of thing. It's really happening. Anyway, I like to use the E11 Blaster. It's my favorite blaster. It's got a really good amount of damage to fire rate, and I'm really happy with it. Now, this, this match right here, you're going to notice I go kind of ham. I mean, it starts off here with me capturing this pod, which is what Drop Zone is. These pods fall, and you have to capture them and defend them. And if somebody else captures it, you have to capture it back before the timer runs out and it goes back and forth. Uh, but I do a pretty good job here at defending this one. A lot of players, they just kind of ob ignore the objective, which is frustrating. So it's very important to defend it, which some people go, No, that's camping. That's camping, bro. You're going to stay in the same spot. That's camping. Yeah, well, you know, that's called the objective here. And this guy thought he was going to get it, and I killed him. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, I, I want to kind of point something out right there on that, that grenade. I saw that the player was coming towards me, and we'll actually back that up and show it again. I saw that player coming towards me, and I knew that my grenade was going to go past him, and you can't cook a grenade. So what I did was I bounced it off that little crater in front of me so it bounced back at him. And if you notice, the grenade is actually what killed him, not my blaster. So it was... Uh, you know, it, it, little things like that. I, I've been playing shooters now for about tw well, over 20 years, and I'm, I'm good at it. I'm not like MLG Pro, but I'm good at it, and I have a lot of fun doing a lot of grenade bouncing and thermal detonators and stuff. Speaking of thermal detonators, uh, I don't know if it's really overpowered, but the game is controlled. Your, hand, your offhand items are controlled by these cards, and as you can see, the cards are, have a cooldown after you use them and they reload. So you kind of have unlimited thermals, uh, thermal detonators, which are very powerful. I mean, one thermal detonator will kill you. It's not like Battlefield, where a direct grenade hit won't necessarily kill you. But in this one here, you can have full health and a thermal detonator will destroy you. Don't even get me started on an uh, imploder. That's insane. That'll take out an entire group of people anywhere near it. But it's pretty fun, and it's actually a drop or a token on the ground that you pick up and you get a one-time use. Uh, but man, it's powerful. Now the gameplay style I like to use here on Drop Zone is if we are controlling a pod, I will like to control the perimeter of that pod. What happens is if people will just sit on that pod, where's the first place people are going to throw grenades and imploders and things? They're going to throw them at the pod because they're expecting people to be camping it. So you'll notice here I kind of work the perimeter of these pods and it works out pretty well. Uh, you'll see me throwing a, what seems to be a lot of random grenades. They're not really random. I've got kind of two thought processes going on as I throw these thermals. And, and you can see you know, I, I kill people sometimes because I'm throwing them where I know the action is happening. I'm not necessarily throwing them at a player. I'm throwing them where I'm watching my teammate shoot, and I'm also looking at the map. So I'm going to throw them where red dots are. And you can throw these things stupid far. I don't know if that's a little overpowered. I don't know if they're going to change it later in the game. But you can throw these, these, I keep calling them grenades. You can throw these thermal detonators really stupidly far. Uh, but because they are on a timer, they will blow up in midair if you try and throw them too far. But it, it's insane how far you can throw them. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm not just throwing it where the action is. If I'm, if I'm trying to control one side of a pod and I've got these rocks and I'm kind of hiding around, I can control which way uh, the enemy players are moving with my grenades. Let's say they're starting to come down one of these little alleyways and a grenade explodes in front of them. 
typically they're going to stop or they're going to back up or they're going to kind of wait and see what's going on before they move forward. That gives me time to throw a grenade and kind of backtrack and go around the other direction where I can hopefully flank or come around behind them. So a lot of the times that's what I'm doing with these thermals is I'm not so much trying to kill someone with them. Uh, I do get lucky kills with them, but I'm trying to control the enemy player movement so that I have control over where my rifle's pointed and hopefully it's pointed at them if things go according to plan. Now I really like this playstyle. It's on a timer. Uh, it can't last any longer than 10 minutes. Uh, or it's the first team to capture five pods. Uh, at least that's the way it, it, it seems to be working out. If you, it's first to five or whoever gets the most in the amount of time. I had a really epic match before this one that unfortunately the sound didn't capture. I didn't set up the sound right in my DX Tori capture software. So it, it, was com it was so epic. It was, it was three to three and the timer had run out and we had one pod that we went back and forth at least five minutes on capturing and recapturing and capturing and recapturing. Uh, we ended up losing, but man, it was epic. I think I had four recaptures on that pod myself and it, it was, I was playing this game going, man, this is gonna be such awesome gameplay. This is gonna be worth watching. And then I played it back and there was no audio. And I'm like, oh man, no. Uh, anyway. Uh, but you'll see some good examples coming up here uh, pretty shortly on this last pod that we capture. Um, at least on the fifth pod where I'm, I'm doing what I, what I just explained, which is the controlling enemy movement uh, with the grenades. Now, Walker Assault, like I said, we'll do a separate video about Walker Assault. Uh, it's so unbalanced, it's not fun. It's, it's one of those things where if you, if you draw the Rebels, because you don't get to pick the team, you, you're assigned the team once you join the game, and you can't really, at least in the beta, you can't switch it. It's one of those things where you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm a uh, Rebel. And people are literally backing out when they see that they've drawn Rebel and rejoining a, a, a lobby to try and see if they can pick uh, Imperials because they know that the Imperials, 9 out of 10 times, are going to win. Now, I've played, I think, probably five or six matches as, uh, or in the uh, Walker Assault. And every single time I was Rebel, we lost. And the other times that I was Imperials, we won except for one time. Uh, out of five or six matches, that's a crazy, that's a terrible ratio. And, and it, I thought it was just me, but then I was live streaming the game and other people were confirming that, nope, Rebels suck in Assault. They're, you're, you're constantly exposed where you spawn in the open, you have terrible trenches. The enemy always has the high ground, so the trenches do you no good. The walkers are incredibly overpowered. Uh, you just are screwed. There's nothing else to say about it. So I'm hoping that because this is a beta, they might find some way to really fix the balance on that. Maybe the game will become a little bit more balanced as uh, it progresses with the you know fully unlocked modes and, and levels and stuff. This is a beta, guys, keep that in mind. But right now, I'm looking forward to this game. I'm going to buy it, there's no doubt about it. And I'll probably be, this will be my Battlefield replacement. I love Star Wars, I love Battlefield. This is built on the same engine. Plays a little bit more like Call of Duty, but it's fast paced and it's just fun. The sounds are rich. The gameplay is pretty fun, uh, and, I, and I haven't found myself raging, well, yet, anyway. All right, guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. It's bringing a little battlef Battlefield uh, drop zone. I called it Battlefield. Battlefront drop zone gameplay. Let me know if you guys want to see some more gameplay on this stuff. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.